G'day guys, Troy from FM Live. Today I'm going to be talking about tactics, the do's and don'ts, uh, my suggestions uh, to develop a tactic and what to look out for. Now I hadn't planned on bringing out a tactics video uh, for at least a couple of weeks or maybe months, but I decided to get in early uh, because I have noticed that in the in the community, some of the forums and uh, some YouTubers and Twitch streamers, uh, not mentioning anyone, but I have noticed they have been struggling with the tactic and getting a, a run of results together. So I decided to jump in early uh, with this little video. So the big one, that, well, the one that I do see often, uh, especially in the forums when they're asking for advice on how to improve tactic, uh, tactics are this right here, the team instructions. Um, you don't need all those team instructions. I do see a lot of people um, having it all filled in. So just because there's an option there to choose something, it doesn't mean you have to choose it. So with a lot of these team instructions, the problem is that uh, the player doesn't really understand how they work. So when they choose that team instruction, they don't quite understand what be more expressive means. So there's creative freedom in the build-up play. So you don't want to choose that for the whole entire side. You want to choose that for just the player roles, for the individuals that have the good vision, have the good decisions, the good passing, the good technique to pull it off. So with that instruction, you're basically giving the, a license to all your midfielders uh, to be more, more expressive, where some of the midfielders in that lineup might not have the right attributes to pull it off. And also when you're going to heavily rotate the sides, bleed in some of the youngsters, they just haven't got the attributes there to, to pull off that team instruction. See, that's that's something that's, uh, with team instructions, a lot of these kind of shouts used to be just that. They used to be touchline shouts. So you could have a look on the pitch and react to something that you see that's happening on the pitch. Say for example exploit the left flank so if you see there's a player that's getting smashed on that left flank in the defense and you want to exploit that left flank on uh, in game itself you can choose that so if you if you see maybe they're running a bit lighter on the left hand side so you can uh, choose to to exploit the left flank you don't have to always have that in team instruction on that's why I think with team instructions the best way to do it is to clear it all so start off with a clean slate, watch the games, watch the preseason, go into the preseason, actually play the preseason games, uh, have a look at the tactic that you're trying to build up and uh, add a couple instructions. If you find you're adding instructions every game or every second game, maybe you want to add those to the team instructions going forward for the whole season. But a lot of these team instructions should be something that you're choosing to react to something in game. Uh, that goes with the um, the team shape and also in your team mentality. What I would normally do is change this depending on who I'm playing. I'll also change it in game as well, uh, just to understand what uh, you were doing when you're changing. As you can see down the bottom there. So as we change it up, we can see the passing direction has gone up. Uh, the closing down a little bit more. We're getting a little bit wider. The tempo goes up a little bit more in the defensive line. So every notch that you do go up, as you can see, it increases a little bit little by little so these are on a sliding scale similar to your attributes your, your 20 to 1 um, they're on a sliding scale so you've got to have a look and see what you think you can get out of so if we want to control the match or we we'll say we want to go on uh, control we're going to move the defensive line up is that is that something that you want to do you're going to uh, close down a little bit more the passing is going to be a little bit more direct you're going to have a little bit more whiff as well same with team shape as well that also changes the closing down the the tempo as well and also I'm pretty sure, no, it doesn't change the width, but there we go. So just understanding what each uh, team uh, mentality and team shape does will help you, or oh, that's a glitch, will help you kind of get an idea on what you want to do uh, going into the next game. The next thing to look at when setting up the tactic is obviously the formation. Now you can go either way on this. You can go in with a, an already an idea on the formation you want to play or how you want to play. Um, or you can have a look at the side that you've got. If you've got a lot of wingers, you've got a lot of inside forwards. With this save in particular, I've got a lot of inside forwards. Um, I didn't want them too high up on the pitch because I think it leaves this flank um, with a lot of room there for, for uh, other teams to exploit. So I push them down a little bit more and this team role now inverted wing is absolutely perfect for those players um, when you have a look at the players themselves and you go over and you have a look is he accomplished is he competent is he natural you don't always need to have a player natural at, at those um, current uh, positions or roles um, what they need is the attributes required for those roles so if you take Marcus Rashford for an example and have a look at him as an in uh, as an inverted winger so when we have a look at Rashford, and remember he's a developing player, only 20 years of age, uh, he's got a lot of attributes there that go hand in hand with that role. We've got decisions, he's got off the ball, he's got the pace, we know that. Uh, he can dribble as well. The only thing he's missing really is the crossing and also his vision as well. Passing is not the best, uh, but that can increase. This crossing is the major one, and I've found in this role as inverted winger, they do get up on the field uh, to, to, to score goals, but also to cross it over, and normally they land on the other wing. Um, so I am working that in training, and that's something uh, for you to look at. But as you can see, he's more than competent in that role. 
So when you're setting up a formation, the player roles and the tactic, uh, what I always say is what you have to look at is how you're going to score, how you're going to defend, and how you've got, how you're going to assist the goals, uh, where the goal's coming from. Uh, so it's always quite important. You've got to have a look and envision how they're getting forward. But the, the main reason is, especially with the newer roles, you have to watch the games and watch the preseason. As I said before, you've got to watch the preseason and see how they're getting forward, see who's actually supplying the run, see who's getting the passes through. This is Game for Football Manager 2018. It's quite good at, uh, with the analyst. It lets you know in what areas of the pitch are vulnerable, uh, especially in defense, and that's something you should probably be looking at. Um, once again, if I said we're going to bring up the players up on the top here, we're going to leave this area kind of bare, and we have to know in this area, the middle area here, as you can see, there's a couple red uh, squares there. So we know already that's a bit vulnerable. So if they're playing with an attacking mid, we know that area is vulnerable already. Um, if they have to then swoop over to the left or the right to monitor, up some um, attacking moves from the opposition that's going to leave this area even more vulnerable leaving your defenders to, to mop it up if your one of your defenders comes forward they can slip in a pass um, and it's uh, it's all over of course this will be a, a lot more attacking tactic um, but you just have to look at the areas that you've you, that you're going to give up when you are attacking um, so that's that's something you need to look at both in attack and defense where the goals are going to come from as I said and where uh, whether your opponent's going to score against you or where you're going to be the weakest you have to have a look maybe get the best players there um, leave leaving a player a little bit deeper getting an attacking player or a player that's going to track back and uh, have a high work rate as well Next thing you want to do when you've got your tactic uh, down pat, after a couple of games and it seems to be working fine, you've got a couple of team instructions there, not too many please. Um, what you need to do then is work out some backup plans. So work out plans for when you're playing a narrow formation, when you're playing a bit wider, maybe they're sitting deep, um, maybe a, an attacking formation against a, a better side than you. You've got to work out different areas or different tactics. Um, it's not, you don't have to change drastically your tactic or add on a whole heap of different team instructions. You can change within the players that play roles. Uh, maybe you want to switch short over to defense maybe you want to um these guys are both on attacking maybe you want them down to support maybe you want a deep line playmaker maybe you want to drop him in the defensive mid area um just something there that you can change up a little bit by a little bit uh change up the tactic have a couple of backup plans um my backup plan for this is i will have typically he's on uh, an attacking winger um if i do want to if i've got a player like darmin or maybe uh, daily blin i'll have to have him as an inverted winger a player on this side as a winger on attack. Um, then I'll have the inverter winger coming into this gap here that Matic's actually left there. Um, so that gives me another player in the attacking third, just in, just in case that I need another player in that middle area here. And that's just one of the areas there that um, that I change up from different game, you know, game to game. Just having a look on how we're going on field and see if that's the area that I want to do. Obviously, the depending on the play you've got in those in those roles, if they can pull it off, they need the high work rate. Obviously, as an inverted winger, they get fairly high up. Sorry, the inverted wing back, they get fairly high up um, and get. If you have a look, you're not only um, you know t 20 yards from the uh, from their attacking winger, but you're also in field as well. So you do need that high work rate, high. Um, uh, high obviously, obviously acceleration um, but there's a couple of attributes there but we won't get into that today um, there's just different little ideas um, just have little areas you don't have to build up three different tactics you just know on the field on the fly um, what different things you're going to try out the next thing we'll talk about and i have touched on it a couple of times now but is watch games watch especially the preseason matches um, watch how your team is attacking attacking how they're defending i would recommend setting up friendly matches against a couple of sides that are weaker than you a couple of sides that are better than you and then just watch individual players what i always do is watch different combinations or play uh, play combinations watch my two center backs see how they're uh, traveling on together see who um see the weak weaker areas see what i need to improve also have a look at the wingers and see how the wing is actually responding to each other and also the central midfield partnership so that's the main, main area doesn't always need to change the player completely or change all the instructions but maybe you want to change the player role add an instruction here or there but it's very important to understand what is actually happening on field is to just watch players i will watch just one player in particular how he how he's um positioned next to say we're watching herrera i'll watch him where his position next to lingard i'll watch him where his position to uh, matic i'll see the passes the runs he makes just to watch that one player you can watch him one uh you know one player per match you probably don't need to watch the whole back line but especially in the build-up phase in the attacking phase you, you need to watch different players on the field at the one one time or i single out out matches just to watch that one player and see how he kind of gets on maybe i need to change the role as i said before or just add one or two instructions
All right, guys, that's it from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. A lot more of these tactic stuff coming up. As I said in the start, at the start of the video, I didn't really plan to bring anything out uh, for a couple of weeks or maybe months even. Just plan to get the easier stuff kind of out of the way because tactics, are, they're hard to try to explain in a, you know, 10 to 15 minute video because there's a lot that goes on in the background and I haven't even touched the surface of um, of what you can do with tactics and, and what you should be looking out for. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe to the channel if you're not already um, if you like the video please give us a thumbs up it always helps me out and um, yeah I'll see you next time